Hello and welcome back to your PA Dutch Minute. Uh, this is episode two in our mini series on famous Pennsylvania Dutch men and women. Uh, in episode one, we talked about Conrad Weiser, the famous interpreter and translator and colonial frontiersman. Uh, episode two, we're dealing with another Conrad. However, it's Conrad Beisel this time, uh, another very famous uh, Pennsylvania Dutchman. So let's talk a little bit about him and, and what he would go on to create. So his full name was Johann Conrad Beisel, born in Eberbach in Germany on the 1st of March, 1691, and he would eventually emigrate to Pennsylvania in 1720. Uh, his whole reason for coming to America was to join a commune of hermits that had been founded by Johannes Kelpius. However, Kelpius had died in 1708, and... Beisel was never able to meet him. This group that Kelpius founded settled uh, along the Wissahickon Creek, not too far from Philadelphia, and there, as was typical in a commune, they prayed, they meditated, and watched the stars looking for signs of the coming kingdom of Christ, and they educated children. Um, these ideas Beisel would carry on into his next stage in life. Some of the members were celibate, uh, but some did marry. Twelve years later, in 1732, Beisel moved west to the banks of the Cacalico Creek in present-day Lancaster County. And it was around this charismatic leader who created a semi-monastic community, originally known as the Camp of the Solitary, um, but eventually become known as the Ephrata Cloister. It was a convent that had a sister's house and a monastery that had a brother's house. It was established in 1732, and they did take the name Ephrata, which comes from the Old Testament. The members of the order were celibate. In addition to celibacy, the members believed in strict interpretation of the Bible and self-discipline. Just how crazy was it? Life there was hard. Members were required to sleep on wooden benches, only 15 inches wide, and instead of having a pillow, they actually had a wooden block for a pillow. They slept six hours per night from 9 p.m. till midnight, and then again from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. That two-hour break in between was known as the watch when they were waiting for the coming of Christ. They ate one small vegetarian meal a day, and that's it. And the only time that followers of Beisel were permitted to eat meat was during the celebration of communion when lamb was served. The members of the cloister spent much of their time at work or praying privately. And their main church service was always on Saturdays, which according to Beisel was the true Sabbath and these church services would be several hours long, of which Beisel preached the sermon, sometimes two, three-hour-long um, sermons, full of music as well, though. Now, during that time in history, there was this hint of dissatisfied, quote-unquote, intellectualism of churches among many colonial Americans. A lot of people wanted to be away from the state-established churches in other colonies. Strict religious lives caused bro the brothers and sisters at Ephra to come together to worship God in other ways. And instead of practicing their religion, they applied it by helping others to become more spiritual and celibate. Among the sisters and the brothers, there included also married people, which became known as householders. These were families who supported and engaged in everyday activities, and they usually lived on farms just outside of the actual cloister. Other than practicing quiet lives like the brothers and sisters who were praying and doing charity work, the cloister also had a duty to keep up with the tasks of living. Farming, industrial work were the typical workload on a daily basis. Although the cloister often, particip often practiced their religion by interpreting biblical works, they did also engage in things like carpentry and paper making. Other tasks included gardening, preparing meals, and mending of clothes. Which, by the way, their clothes was a simple white garment that both the men and the women wore. Now, not only were the cloisters, was the cloister famous for their writings and hymns, which were done on the printing press, but they became very busy people, especially when it came to chores. They manufactured clothing on a mill and kept their lives busy by creating duties and obligations. The cloister's sisters and brothers did have a positive outlook on life. They respected their neighbors, the land, and the environment. Education was also important in their society. It was important that every child maintained an education, and these would be the children coming from the householders. They were educated in the German school system, so German, high standard German was the, was the language of choice in the schools. The idea that educating a young one was the charity of the cloister, and they also helped the poor by passing around bread and other food to poor families 
in the greater Ephrata community. Other families, like we talked about before, nearby the community, accepted Beisel as their spiritual leader and worshipped with them on the Sabbath. These families made an integr integral part to the cloister, which could not be self-sustaining without them. The brothers and sisters of Ephrata are famous for the writing and publishing of hymns, as mentioned before, and the composition of tunes in four voice parts. Beisel himself served as the community's composer, as well as the spiritual leader, and devised his own system of composition. They created their own hymnal, the Ephrata hymnal, which was words only, was printed in 1747. There is still an Ephrata choir today, a chorus today, that dresses in the traditional garb uh, and performs the hymns that Beisel wrote. And you can purchase their music online, and they also do concerts around the southeastern Pennsylvania region from time to time. The cloister had the second German language printing press in the American colonies outside of Philadelphia, where the first one was, and they published many, many books in colonial America. Their most famous publication, The Martyr's Mirror, is a history of the deaths of Christian martyrs from the time of Christ all the way until 1660. Beisel sadly died in 1768, and this contributed to a declining membership. The monastic aspect was gradually abandoned, with the last celibate member dying in 1813. In 1814, the society was incorporated as the German Seventh-day Baptist Church. In 1941, the 28 acre tract of land with remaining buildings was passed over to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for use as a state historical society. And the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission led excavations there, which among other things uncovered the cloister's use as a Revolutionary War hospital. At its height, the effort of community grew to 250 acres inhabited by about 80 celibate men and women. They, the married congregation outside numbered approximately 200. And the last surviving resident of the cloister, Marie Bucher, Bucher, died on the 27th of July, 2008, at the age of 98. If you're interested in learning more about the Ephrata cloister, I would invite you to visit the cloister. It is in Ephrata. I've included a link uh, in the comment section of the video. It's from the months of March to December. They are open seven days a week. Uh, there is a small entrance fee. They have a great little museum there that explains the history better than I just did. And you can walk the grounds with a tour guide uh, and go inside the original buildings, the original sister's house, where they had uh, church services. There's also the cemetery on the property, which has Beisel's grave. It's a beautiful, beautiful tract of land. So I would highly recommend visiting. Between um, January and March, they have limited hours, but all that information is available on their website. And I highly recommend, if you have the opportunity to catch the choir, the, co the chorus in concert, to do so. It's absolutely beautiful. Beautiful music. So, Conrad Beisel, another famous Pennsylvania Dutchman. He grows growing up where he did and where he was born. He would have spoke the dialect, like Pennsylvania Dutch, bringing it here to the United States, and the vast majority of all the people that joined Ephrata and the surrounding householder communities, those were all Pennsylvania Dutch families. Uh, remember from video, the first video in our mini-series, Conor Weiser actually went to Ephrata for a little bit and um, lived there with the brothers, uh, eventually moving back to his homestead, but he did spend some time there and he did uh, get to meet uh, Conor Beisel uh, before he passed away. So look forward to uh, future videos in this mini-series on famous Pennsylvania Dutch women, men or, and or women. Uh, I'll keep them coming. If you have an idea for a future video, please send me an email. Email address is at the end. Uh, if you want something cultural, something language-based, something historical-based, I'll gladly do that. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet on YouTube, please do so. That way you get an update every time a new video comes out. Until next time, learn a little bit about our history and our culture. Visit Ephrata Cloister if you get the opportunity, if you live nearby, and Mox Good. Mm -hmm.